Hello food fans, I am at Hardee's, uh, which I guess is similar to Carl's Jr. in lots of places. And I have a Dr. Pepper. With no ice, and I'm getting the uh, big chicken fillet, which is pretty big. Bite of this. It's very good. Got a crunchy crust on the chicken that's in the sandwich there. Try a couple of fries. And I will talk a little bit today. Where can I put these? I guess right back in the bag. Um, talk about some of the people I've worked with. I had a video, I guess about a week ago. Where I mentioned some of the people I'd worked with. <clears throat> I want to know who you wanted to have me talk about. And I've got a list here. I'll try to get all these in. There are many more comments, and I'll eventually catch up on the different people, telling a little bit about each one, beginning with Sean Connery. I first worked with him accidentally at a far distance. I walked into the airport in Las Vegas when uh, they happened to be filming there and I was probably way in the background of some of the scenes in the airport and that was uh, Diamonds Are Forever but I didn't actually work it. I was there on other business. And I worked him with him on a more memorable day TBS, which is the Burbank Studios, where you do Warner Brothers and Columbia Pictures. I worked with him, and Richard Brooks was directing Richard Book. Richard Brooks was probably crazy, crazy, crazy. Interesting guy to work with. He was firing people left and right. And supposedly, by the way, the movie was Wrong is Right with Sean Connery. And I was in some sort of a gallery, like a bleachers, sitting down watching something. And Sean Connery was there. When in the scene, suddenly gunfire uh, erupts and people are shooting at each other. Supposedly, Richard Brooks only released that day's shooting script each day that went by and the actors didn't know what was coming up next. I, I doubt if that is totally true. But supposedly nobody knew what Richard Brooks had in store for the next day and the next day. And when the shooting started, it didn't really make sense in the scene. But supposedly Richard Brooks wrote it because of the news of the day. That happened to be the day we went to lunch and I heard the news that President Reagan had been shot. And on that day, we were shooting uh, Wrong is Right. And a lot of people on the set thought that Richard Brooks just wrote that in because of the news of the day. Let me see who we got here. Charlton Heston. Worked with Charlton Heston on a movie. Um, Gideon, G-I-D-E-O-N. Great cast. Uh, kind of a boring movie, but he had to do a speech uh, when the actor's saying something, just not in dialogue with people, not saying, hi, how you doing? But he's actually saying a lot of words, a uh, couple, three paragraphs, and Charlton Heston had a paragraph in his script. It was really 
the kind of thing that'd be hard to memorize. It's sort of like the Gettysburg Address, only more difficult to remember. And Charlton Heston came in, did his scene, got it in one take, no problems whatsoever. It'd be a couple years later, he'd be diagnosed as uh, having Alzheimer's, early stages of Alzheimer's, but what a memory the guy had, and what great delivery. He, he was fantastic. Uh, I admired him. Uh, he would say hello to me each day. I go in. I was standing in for Harvey Corman, who was in the movie Gideon, and so I would see Charlton Heston every day. I would see Carol O'Connor every day. And Charlton Heston is known for being a conservative, and Carol O'Connor known for being a liberal. And they got along finally, said they admired each other for the acting abilities, and it was good to see them working together and to be working with them. Ricardo Montalbán. Ricardo Montalbán was the nicest guy I think I've ever met in my life. Ricardo Montalbán was always pleasant, always smiling, always glad to see each person who arrived on a set. My friend, I, I probably told this story before, but I'll tell it again because it's a good one. My friend who was an extra went to work on the set of Fantasy Island. And my friend was a bartender that particular day. And he's on the set and Ricardo Montalbán walks in and my friend said, Hello, Fernando. Um, and a lot of people might get Fernando Lamas and Ricardo Montalbán mixed up. But my friend said, Hello, Fernando. And Ricardo Montalbán said, hello, my friend. The sandwich is good. Hardy's Carlos Jr. Big chicken fillet. I don't know if that means it's a fillet of a big chicken or it's a big fillet of a chicken. It has a good flavor. Arnold Schwarzenegger it was fun to work with. I worked with him on Commando at the airport in Los Angeles. I was just a person in the background. Did not have any conversations with him. And uh, Arnold, between takes, was smoking on a cigar, puffing on a cigar. He was not as big as I thought, but he was big and muscular. Commando's a good movie, I recommend it. And um, Arnold was pleasant, no arguments about anything. They would tell him what the scene was, and he would do it. Uh, and again, I do recommend Commando. Let's see who we got next. Tim Burton. Tim Burton directed Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I had a silent bit in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. My car. My car was used in the... Uh, drive-in movie portion, my yellow blur, the Rambler, 1969 Rambler. But when I was at that uh, diner where the dinosaurs are outside, Tim Burton directed me a silent bit. He called me Tom. I called him Tim. He was nice, and he, when he would tell Pee Wee Herman what to do, Tim would actually run through the scene like Pee Wee Herman. He would do an impression of Pee Wee Herman and he was really good at it. So that uh, Pee Wee Herman could do it, he'd have no doubt about what the director wanted. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, the Dear John Cass. Dear John Cass, wonderful, wonderful people. The, the cliché, 
just like a family really applies there. Uh, everybody at Dear John was friendly, nice, helpful. I can tell you Judd Hirsch loved animals, had uh, at least uh, one major animal charity that he promoted, the Wildlife Way Station. And they all were present. And that also applies to the production team, the writing team. Um, everyone who worked on that show, cast and crew. Never an unkind word from anybody to anybody. Rock Hudson. Worked with him on a TV movie called The Star Maker. Then I worked with him on, I think the TV series was called Devlin Connection. And then I worked with him on Dynasty. First time I worked with him, he was very healthy. And um, he was the same exact height and probably within a pound or two the same weight as myself. We got to work early on uh, the Star Maker, and it was just he and I, and the catering truck, and a couple of assistant directors. And we chatted about why we got to work early because that's the way we were taught back in the 1940s and 1950s. When you go to work for someone, you get there on time or early. And Rock Hudson was just a pleasant person, very well liked by everyone who worked with him in Hollywood. Liz Taylor, worked with her one time on a TV movie called There Must Be a Pony. She was past the age of 50. She looked like she was in her early 30s or late 20s. She was a beautiful lady. I didn't get close to her, like I wasn't within a couple of feet of her or anything, but she looked great. And she knew her lines, she knew where to go next when she's in a scene. She was, she was a true professional, wonderful lady. And they did have a rule, the ADs told us, uh, those of us who were extras on the movie, told us don't talk to Liz Taylor. She doesn't want anyone talking to her, and there's a reason she didn't, because the National Enquirer and other tabloids were always doing hit pieces on Liz Taylor, and she was trying to put a stop to it, and possibly some of the extras were supplying information that was uh, not theirs to supply. She seemed like a very nice person, and she definitely was beautiful. Woody, excuse me, Woody Harrelson, who worked on Cheers, he was our special guest one week on Dear John. Plus, we would see him every week, especially on Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights was our filming night for Dear John. And it was also the filming night for Cheers. And we would share a lunch with him at Paramount. And Woody Harrelson, instead of eating lunch, he would be playing basketball with Jerry Burns of Dear John. And Woody was great. Uh, and he, he was a person who showed up on time and did everything he could to make the production a good thing and a fun person. Uh, that was then. I don't know what uh, movie making is like now, but it was wonderful in the 1980s. It was, it was not the golden era, but it was the silver era. It was a fabulous time to be in the business.
Woody Harrelson, the next name, Johnny Cash. I was backstage with Johnny Cash. I was a radio announcer in Las Vegas at a country music station. So I got to go backstage at the Mint Hotel and Casino, and I would see Johnny Cash and talk with him. And I interviewed uh, Merle, not Merle Travis, not Merle Haggard, but uh, the fellow who wrote Overton Mountain. I took him to the radio station and interviewed him, but uh, Johnny Cash, at that time, this would be about 1963 or 64, and he was not in good physical condition. He looked like he might weigh 110 pounds. He was very pale looking, but he could sure sing. When he went on the microphone, he was Johnny Cash. Hi, I'm Johnny Cash. Jonathan Winters, funniest guy I've ever met in my life. He, 90% of the time he's doing a character. He invents, invents characters. And I got to work with him when I was Abe Lincoln on Mork and Mindy. And he was doing Abe Lincoln shtick with me. He would get me and uh, come over and talk to me and say, Mr. President, we've got problems. We've got problems down in South America. We've got to send uh, General Ed Asner. Jed, Ed Asner at that time was the um, president of the Screen Extras Guild. And Jonathan Winters said, we've got to send General Ed Asner down to South America. Jonathan Winters was nice. He never made fun of anyone. He never insulted anyone. His comedy was always himself being an unusual character. Very, very funny man. I also worked with him on um, more Wild Wild West. TV show or TV movie. Robert Conrad, Ross Martin, and Jonathan Winters was funny on that one. First time I saw him in person it would have been 1956 or 57. He was on NBC Comedy Hour, and I went to see that. They, did, they rehearsed some things outside in front of the theater. I was right there watching him. He was funny then. Watch. It's a mad, 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 mad world if you haven't seen that. Madonna. I was at the uh, craft services table, the snack table, working with Madonna on Who's That Girl, which at the time I was working it was called Slammer, that was the original title, and she came over and started talking to me about the food, oh that looks good, I can't have that, that looks good, and um, she was nice, just a nice young lady, and uh, she was nice on the set with everyone. Robert Stack. I worked with Robert Stack on a TV series he had in the 1980s. I think it was called Strike Force. He was a very nice man. Of all the movie stars or anybody I've ever seen, he had the best posture, always. Standing very straight, and he had a pleasant voice, pleasant demeanor on the set. He was never 
argumentative in any way. He was just a nice guy to be around. And I worked uh, several episodes of that. But uh, the show, I think they made only about six episodes. Last one, I'll mention Fred Gwynn. It was Herman Munster. I worked with him on Munster's Revenge. He and I and Al Lewis, who was Grandpa Munster, Ivan DiCarlo, and Sid Caesar had a nice conversation about residuals, uh, being paid for something that you worked in a long time ago. And Sid Caesar's talking about how he got nothing for the reruns of your show of shows. And uh, uh, Fred Gwynn talked about how he did get some residuals for the first couple or three years, but they ran out because the contract wasn't like the current contract, which goes on forever. You'll always get something. If, if you're a member of Screen Actors Guild and you work in a scene today, the residuals are forever. They get smaller and smaller, but they're always there. Fred Gwynn, a very pleasant man. And Yvonne Di Carlo, by the way, is a very beautiful lady. Very beautiful. Um, anyway, I'll finish my sandwich here. And, 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 my french fries and my Dr. Pepper. Thank you for watching.